The Forestry Roads of Mitchellstown, the venue for the second round of the National Forestry Rally Championship. At the last round, we saw Gareth McKeel take victory in his WRC Crawler. He'll be out today to repeat that result. However, with the likes of Glenn Allen, Kevin O'Kane, Dermot Kelly and John McCarthy hot on his tail, he won't have an easy task. Gareth, a fantastic result in Carrick and Shire. Will you be able to match that result today in Mitchellstown? Yeah, we're certainly going to go for that breed. Um, Carrick and Shire is a great start to the championship. And uh, I want to try and build on it here and hopefully go for another win here in Mitchellstown. No lack of competition here today either? No, it's good competition here. Um, you have Kelly at number one, you have Glenn Allen. That's number three. You have um, Adrian McAvaney. And, uh, of course, John McCarthy is here as well. That's home 30, so it should be, should be a good battle. But well, Dermot, you can see yourself, the competition is really increasing in the Forestry Championship this year. Yeah, um, a lot of good cars out there, a couple of new faces. I suppose it's time is all getting old, but how's ever, <laughs> we'll do our best. What more can we do? Any threats you would see? Oh, a lot of threats. <laughs> there always are, but sure, we'll carry on our normal pace and sort of see what happens. John, unfortunately, you were having problems with the steering. At the last round, have you got it sorted out for Mitchellstown? That's right, Breed. We were unlucky. We reversed the car out of scrutiny on Saturday night and uh, couldn't turn the car to the right. The problem turned out to be a circlip came loose and wedged. So for the full Carrigan show, we couldn't turn the car to the right. I think even we saw your camera on one hairpin right that we had to reverse twice. So the steering is fine now and there shouldn't be a problem. Adrian, you were having a brilliant run in Carrigan show until that rock appeared out of nowhere. Yeah, I know. I didn't even see the rock until I, uh, really till I rewound the, the tape. Sure, after the rally the last day, I wasn't even sure what actually did it. I knew it hit something and I could feel the bang coming up through the car, but uh, it wasn't until I rewind the tape back to actually seeing the rock. So, it's unfortunate. Quite a change from the Escort to the Evo, Pete. What made you make that switch? Um, not really sure. just decided we'd try four-wheel drive last year. Had a couple of good results and Derek job there. Played a very good car this year, but miss happened the last one, so hopefully a steady run today. Please, God. Our cameraman, Jer McCarran's children, point to the first man on the road. Former winners of the event, Dermot Kelly and Greg Shinners. The escort crew were off to a bad start after collecting a puncture and leaving the road briefly. The Charleville driver is already on the back foot, and with the current speed of the new kids on the block, it could well be a sign of things to come. Glenn Allen and Damien Connolly, this is their last outing in the escorts as they've decided to move up to a Toyota Corolla WRC. This crew decided to skip the circuit of Ireland in favour to try and extend their current lead after a memorable win on the opening round in Carrick on Shore. The name McHale is a new family dynasty in Irish rallying. 24-year-old Gareth is following in both his father's and uncle's footsteps. A former champion and one of the most experienced drivers in the championship is Kevin O'Kane. He has Martin Hanna, as usual, calling the notes, and these guys don't back down easily from a challenge brought on by the young guns. But even the most experienced can make mistakes, and this spin costs Kevin dearly. Pat Norris and Declan Tumulty are the jokers in the pack. Pat came back out of retirement and proved that he had not lost any of his speed and is always there or thereabouts. These guys make it tough for the regulars and are quite capable of taking an overall win at some point. Possibly the fastest car in the world, John McCarthy and Mickey Morrissey have their teething problems surely sorted out from the conversion from left hand to right hand drive. John was very successful a couple of years ago in the ex Fisher Impreza with a string of wins. Another part of the up-and-coming young generation is Adrian McIlvany and Paul Goodman. This is their second outing for the Monaghan crew in the ex-Richard Byrne Subaru. They were lying in a very strong second place on round one until a stray rock put them out of contention. 60. Five left. 60. One left of our bump. 60, one right. 40, caution, six right, tightened. Seven. 
James Murphy and Anthony Nestor are still campaigning in the Group A escort. Their opening round was also a disaster for them as they retired early on with suspension failure. They are hopeful that this event won't throw up any surprises, but you never know an Irish rally. Patrick Elliott and Mark Owens have updated their Lancer this year to an Evo 8 model in a bid to retain the title as champions. They are very consistent in the National Tarmac Series and they seem to fare better in the woods. 30 to 4 left cut fast and 30 to 5 right plus fast. 60 to 2 right fast over small crest bump. To right over small crest bump, 60 to right over small crest flat, 40 to 2 right line, 3 left fast. Corks beat Willoughby and Greg McCarthy set a cracking pace on the first stage of the first round in Carrick, only to throw it all away on the very next stage. The Group N Hard Lancer will no doubt be in a strong position should they finish the race. Last year's Group N pace sitters Stephen Moore and Tony McHugh were slow starters this season after the break. These guys have often put many of the WRC drivers' times to shame and could very well be the crew to break up the lineup of WRC rally cars. This driver needs no introduction as the stone-mad Wicklow driver is the fastest two-wheel driver competing in the Irish Forest at the moment. We have seen the pace of Brian Lawler go from strength to strength, but he doesn't seem to have any challengers at the moment. And three left long, two left long, and three left long, 40, one right. 40, one right, 80, two right. Maybe this driver can give Lawler a headache. Frank Kelly and John Shelvin have mostly competed in the Northern Irish series, but this year have decided to give the regulars in the southern side a shake-up, but spinning in front of our cameraman doesn't help. The barks through the trees can only be the Toyota of Paul Mulcahy and Carl Bowman. The Waterford crew are without doubt one of the most sideways and entertaining crews out there. And even despite all that, they seem to collect class win after class win. But pushing too hard has its limits. Andy Mackerel and Richard Cassidy have competed on both sides of the border in all types of events. This year sees an unusual change as he has left his faithful Oakville to join the four-wheel drive brigade. It will be a learning curve that could take a bit of getting used to. Ton Melcrew, James Coleman and Owen O'Neill were in their usual flying form, but in the two-wheel drive category have no answers to Lawler and company. The best they could hope for is a steady drive, and should any of the top runners fall out, they could go for broke. Six left and under the tree, it's farty then, the long six left then. Long six left tightens over bumps, farty. Farty three right, 60. Three right. Gold driver Joe Shinners have upped the ante this year in a bid for two-wheel drive honours with a 2.4-litre engine transplant. This, however, is the last we shall see as there are still teething problems with the new setup and the retire with drive shaft failure. The Subaru of Brian McGillan and David Doherty made its first appearance in Mitchellstown, but by stage two, they were on their way back to Tyrone after mechanical failure forced them out. American crew Patrick Keenan and Finian Hannigan trying to compete in Irish soil whenever possible. Their car is somewhat different to the one used in America and it's vastly underpowered. A good result in the highly competitive group Ben is a tall order, but cutting corners is not the way to do it. And to sudden turn hairpin right, this over narrow bridge. Watch. Oh. Jesus. Hairpin left. Oh. As I get from cotton. This car is a very popular sight with Irish spectators, as it was once the tarmac car of Patrick Elliott. Its current owner of the last few seasons, Pat Price, is certainly having some fun in the woods. 130 and turn here from right. That's it. Well done. One. Two right flat. Longford's Michael Murray and Tommy Doyle have competed on the world stage but now have turned to more local events. This is the only chance we get to see them on this event as they retire later on with a very down on power car. Emma, it's very refreshing to see a female competitor here for the Forestry Rally today, but as well as that, you're in joint third overall in the 205 challenge at the moment. Yeah, we're joint third with Adrian McBride now, so it's our first forestry this year. So we're looking forward to it. It's very different to Tarmac. 
You wouldn't have got a recce on these stages. How do you find that? Uh, it'll be harder, but I mean, we'll get used to it. We did sweet lamb over in Wales a couple of weeks ago, and we've no recce for that either, so we'll get used to it going around. Emma unfortunately retired shortly after service, and hopefully both Emma and Paula Nooney will join the Forest Series again to spice up the action. Dermot Kelly is being pushed to the absolute limits of his escort. The Charleville driver has again been struck by another puncture on the same Camborne stage that he got the first one. Clocking up a whopping 24 seconds faster than his previous time and 19 seconds quicker than the nearest crew, Gareth McHale continued to stomp his authority on the event. Glenn Allen is having a ball in his final fling in the escort, so much so that he scares himself but not the very cool, calm and collected Damien Connolly. Two right over crest, and long three right past junction. One left continues. And four right over finish. Watch the four right over Oh, Jesus. Four right over finish. Oh, she's on that is driving very neat and intelligently despite being second overall he is a huge 20 seconds down on the leader McHale John McCarthy and his Hancock sponsored Corolla had a bit of drama when some oil blowing on the windscreen caused him some concern it's curtains for Adrian McIlvany and Paul Goodman running as high as second in their Subaru until they succumb to head gasket failure it's a bad mode 80 two left rough Go on, go on. It's going up, though. It's going up, It's overheated. It's really half rough. It's overheated. Drop down the light. Light's on, you know. It's good. James Murphy is another addition to the retirement list when James makes an uncharacteristic mistake and throws the escort off the road into the trees. Patrick Elliott is still going well and holding eighth comfortably. He has been getting more rally miles under his belt than most, but needs to get some solid results to keep the title. The two right line, three left fast. Two right line, three left fast, 80 down the mid. Into six left on the bottom, over rough. Six left, cut care. Keeping a cool head on his shoulders is Pete Willoughby and holding station ahead of Elliott. Second in Group N is his position and he holds it comfortably. Leading the pack in Group N is Stephen Moore, and he cannot afford to relax. Yet he cannot afford to be too hasty, with Willoughby snapping at his heels. Lawler still leads the two-wheel drive brigade, but is suffering with an engine that could overheat at any moment. The radiator cap has gone faulty, and the escort temperature is in the red. Six left, caution, two right at the square left. Caution, two right at the square left, 80. Double caution. Coleman is holding third in class a further minute down on Lawler and loses a bit of time passing the stricken car of James Murphy. And a tree right continues and tightens for 100 bad dip. Tree right continues and tightens. Bad dip. One in the same. One in. One. Come up. Come up. 100. Up two right here and a long tree right. Well, it's Dublin or Gareth McHale and co-driver Paul Nagel who are setting the pace here in Mitchellstown at the second round of the National Forestry Valley Championship. However, John McCarthy just slides six seconds behind him. Can Gareth make this his second win in a row? Join us after the break to find out. Oh, no. Yet again, you're setting top times out there. Yeah, the first stage went very well. We were fast in the first stage by about eight seconds. Um, second stage was a bit of a mess. There was a lot of, a lot of loose gravel on it. It was high speed. And I think uh, there's just been a bit erratic there and sliding the car too much. We dropped a bit of time there to 
playing Alan and to Adrian, and then the third stage went seemed to go fairly well for me. I think Adrian is out now. That might work to your advantage. Uh, that's a shame because um, I like Adrian there to have a good battle. I think he was six or seven seconds behind me going into that stage, so I was looking forward to having a good battle with Adrian. Glenn, you're having a few problems out there this morning. However, fourth place isn't bad. Um, well, I wasn't actually sure where we were sitting uh, at the minute. We had a, a wee electrical problem in the first stage. Um, got it fixed. I don't know how it just miraculously fixed itself. So we had a good run in the second stage and got a punter in the third one there. So we're, we're fitting up new tyres here now and, and hopefully we'll have a good run. The stage is nice condition, you know, so we can say maybe pick up a few places yet. John, your team seems to be working on a few difficulties here. Yeah, we're very happy. We started our steering problem. We were on new tyres, which we were confident. The car was right. And on the way out to the first stage, we tried the anti-lag and the throttle jammed open. And then on the start line of the first stage, with two seconds to go, it started spitting smoke out the slot here on the bonnet and onto the screen. So, like, the cockpit is filling with smoke, and we're getting a lot of oil onto the screen. How much time would this have cost you? I don't know, it'd be wrong to say. We're trying very, very hard. I'm going as hard as I can. But fire is a, is a worry. There's no point in saying otherwise. Pat, just five seconds in it between yourself and John McCarthy. They're having quite a battle out there. Yeah, I didn't think we were so close. We had a very bad uh, run on the very very first stage. Uh, as it happened, we got off the stage. The tyres were up at 45 pounds of pressure, so they got hot on the road. So I'm, I'm surprised to be where we are. You must have upped your pace from then on. Two and three were very good, yeah. Very good. Kelly, lost time on the previous stage when he forgot to switch on the anti-lag. As we can hear now loud and clear, it's on now. Although on full charge, he is still over a minute back on McHale. And the arrival of McHale shows that this 24-year-old has a very mature head on his shoulders. With no drama to report, he is in a clear lead and is showing the elder Lemons the way home. Pat Norris is no slouch either. He's in the top three and could pounce on the top position should any of the leaders depart. With his new sponsors providing the rubber, John McCarthy has Hancock on board. And now that they are working well, he is climbing up the leaderboard from inside the top ten to second overall. Glenn Allen is enjoying himself immensely, but is working very hard. As we hear, the escort is very off-key, and the misfire is down to faulty electronics. Just drift is Patrick Elliott's motto, and it works fine for him as he gets the Lancer well on boost out of this tight corner. Third in Group N is for his efforts. Watch, watch the logs in the inside, don't cut. 100 out of it. That's 100 out of it. Pete Willoughby is one position ahead and collects more points. Chasing the lead is a tough act to follow, but his second place result is a good result. But winner of Group N by just nine seconds is the very talented Stephen Moore, who has settled into his winning ways. Trying hard to get his rear-wheel drive car to turn in, Brian Lawler and Peter Kavanagh claim first in class and fastest two-wheel drive by just five seconds. And three right, 40, six right over crest, six right over crest, 60. Six, five right, crest, bump, 60. So a caution, four, six, right. Frank Kelly and John Chevel to put Lawler under enough pressure, but are pipped by five seconds to the post. The last of the late breakers and king of the steer from the rear, Paul McCahey and Carl Bowman collect their customary first in class. Johnny McKenna and Paul Howe are one step off the podium with fourth in Group N and collect valuable points to add to their class win in round one. Andy Mackerel and Richard Cassidy arrive at 13th overall and gather some four-wheel drive experience. James Coleman and Owen O'Neill clinched third in class in their escorts and it has proved to be faultless throughout the event. They just need faster stage times to challenge the leaders. Boom. It's a long one left. Caution, five right, five left. Turn five right, five left. Five left. Into six right, one left. One left here, 63 left, don't cut. Three left, don't cut. 
Patrick Keenan finishes in 15th overall and makes it well worthwhile for both he and Finian Hannigan to make the trip from the States, and he does not hide his excitement. 60, left six continues for 80, and to right three, the Titans. To the red spot, we have cleared the last age. Don Keating is son of former Tarmac champion and upkeeps family honour with a credible 12th overall and 5th in class. On his first time out in a four-wheeler, Aidan Jackson hired this Lancer to compete on his local event, but he and navigator Lee McLaughlin retired on stage five, but decided to give us a rubber donut before retiring. Pat Price was guided by Limerick man Seamus O'Connor and had a steady run to 27th overall. 40, caution, six right. That's one right slowing. 40, caution, six right. Whoa, three left, two right on course. Into one left long flat. Another crew from Tyrone is Michael McGillan and Alan Keener, who are on the ragged edge but put in some very stylish driving in their escort to collect fifth in class. Five left, 40. Five left, 40. Four right rough, and five left of a bump. Four right rough, five left of a bump, and six right of a hole. 40, and slippy, four right. 80. Joe McDonald almost came a cropper on this junction and are very lucky to get away with no damage. Andrew Fanning borrowed a Ford car for this event rather than use his usual rear-wheel drive Puma and it appears he has adapted quite well to the car despite never competing in one before. Collecting a class win in their courser is the Dineen brothers from Ventry, County Kerry. Michael Nevin and John Kinahan win their class also in their ever-consistent escort. Mathurus Shinners and Janice Mackerel, wife of Andy, also had a great run and won their class by almost a minute and gathering more trophies for the Shinners household. Third in the two-leader class is Sean Benskin, who follows in the footsteps of his brother Ray. Ray claims second in class behind the rapid Jason Roach, who won the class by well over a minute. Despite this indiscretion, Andrew Carney collects a class win in his Peugeot Cup car. Connor Kelly, son of Dermot, bags two wins from two events in the junior category and is a clear lead in the championship. And so to the top five, Dermot Kelly may hang up the gloves to make way for the youngster, but there's life in the old dog yet as he collects fifth. Glenn Allen's run was both hairy and scary, but fourth overall was the making of a great weekend for the Tyrone driver. A cool third overall was a great result for Pat Norris, who could be well within a shout of the championship if everything goes to plan. Best improved driver of the day and definitely a threat for the remainder of the season, John McCarthy is back on form with an excellent and overdue result and collects second. But it's the young guns who are firmly in control as Gareth McHale and Paul Nagel's decision to skip the circuit in favour to concentrate on his Forest Championship lead as he takes second win in a row and consolidates his lead. Congratulations, Gareth. You've made it your second victory in a row in the forest here. Did you find this event more or less challenging than the last? It was more challenging, definitely, because uh, I never did the stages before. And in Carrick, I did them in 2003, so it was all a new experience down here. Uh, the second stage is fantastic, and I'm absolutely delighted here to get two wins in a row. It's a great start to the championship. And the top five final results from the Sean Collin Memorial Rally. Dermot Kelly in fifth, Glenn Allen in fourth, Pat Norris in third, John McCarthy in second, and Gareth McHale and Paul Nagel in first. With the last minute decision to pull out of the circuit of Ireland and compete here at the second round of the National Forestry Rally Championship really has proven worthwhile for the young driver Gareth McHale and co-driver Paul Nagel who took their second victory in the Forestry Championship here this weekend. They've definitely proven to the opposition that they have what it takes. However, will they be able to keep it up? It's early in the championship yet, but it's looking good for the Dublin driver. Next week, we head back to Kerry for round two of the Dunlop National Rally Championship, featuring the Group N showroom category. Don't miss all the action right here.